Dear students, welcome to Impulse Master Class. This program is designed for 10th class students. Myself, Jnana Krishna, senior faculty in physics. I had overall experience of 17 years. Currently, I am working in Impulse Junior College, Hyderabad. Students, today we are going to discuss reflection of light in optics. And in that chapter, first of all, we are going to discuss deviation due to plane mirror. Now, let's have a look at this question. I give two mirrors here. This is a mirror one, and this one is mirror two. Angle between these two plane mirrors 70 degrees, and uh, light ray is falling on mirror one at this point with some angle 30 degrees. Here, my question: Find the deviation due to two plane mirrors after two reflections. After two reflections, we have to calculate the deviation. How much it is? Option A. 80 degrees anticlockwise, option B 220 degrees clockwise, option C 120 degrees clockwise, option D 260 degrees anticlockwise. When these questions are asking in examination, some of the students are facing complexity. So, I am going to discuss these models in simple way in this master class. In order to solve this problem, we need to know two basic concepts. One is loss of reflection, another one deviation. Let's understand loss of reflection by using these three orientations of plane mirrors first. Look at here, first plane mirror I kept along horizontal. First of all, we should draw the normal. What is normal? The line which is perpendicular. Here, the dotted line represents here normal. Here, this one is perpendicular to the plane mirror. Now, let us consider an object. Object means what? It produces light ray. So, one of the light ray is falling somewhere on the plane mirror here. Where it strikes on the plane mirror, that point is called point of incidence. From there, that light ray reflects again. So, this one is called reflected ray. You can see this one is called reflected ray. I represent like R dot R reflected ray. So, according to the first law of reflection, angle of incidence is always equal to angle of reflection. Angle of incidence means it is the angle between incident ray and normal. So, this one is the incident ray and this one is the normal. Here, I is the angle of incidence and this one is the reflected ray. Angle between the reflected ray and the normal is called angle of reflection. According to this first law, this angle of incidence and angle of reflection both are equal. That means, angle of incidence is always equal to angle of reflection. Similarly, look at here second mirror which is along vertical. Here, mirror is along vertical, therefore, normal should be along horizontal. So, this one is called normal. Now, for example, a light ray is coming from somewhere, it is instant at this point. What is this point? What I told? This point is called point of incidence and this one is called incident ray. Angle between the incident ray and the normal. I mean, this one is incident ray, this one is a normal. Angle between these two is called angle of incidence. Let it be I. Again, here the light ray reflected back, this one is called reflected ray. Angle between this reflected ray and the normal is called angle of refraction. Of course, we told according to loss of reflection, angle of incidence is also equal to angle of reflection. That's why represented here angle of reflection R also as I. Similarly, go through the third one. Here, I kept mirror in slant position. So, whatever may be the orientation of the plane mirror, whether it is along horizontal or vertical or in slant position or the plane mirror makes some angle anywhere, it does not matter. First of all, you should draw the normal before you go into calculate the angle of incidence. That is why for the slant position of the plane mirror, first of all, look at the normal. So, normal should be always perpendicular to the plane mirror. See, this one is the normal for this type of plane mirror. Now, for example, if light ray is coming like this, this one is called incident ray. This incident ray makes some angle with the normal. Once again, this one is called angle of incidence. Again, reflection takes place and that ray will go like this. This one is called reflected ray where it strikes on the mirror that is called point of incidence and angle between the reflected ray with the normal is called angle of reflection. Of course, according to the loss of reflection, we already told that angle of incidence is always equal to angle of reflection. Let us understand the deviation due to 
single plane mirror first. Look at this example. Let us consider plane mirror. This one is instant ray. In case if plane mirror is not here, this instant ray has to go in a straight line without any deviation. Like this. Okay. But due to the plane mirror, that light ray is deflected like this. So that instant ray, how much angle it deflected, that is called deviation. Nothing but from here to here, that instant ray, this is called E I R. E nothing but extended instant ray. That instant ray is deflected how much angle that is called deviation. So, this one is said to be deviation. So, how to calculate the deviation? So, we know that this one is angle of incidence i and this one also angle of reflection i. So, then what about this total angle 2i? We know that for this straight line, what about this total angle 180 degrees, right? So, what about this one angle? Angle of incidence i, angle of reflection i. But uh, this one is called what? This one is called deviation, represented as delta. Delta is the deviation. So, that delta we can write down here is equal to. So, this total one is 180 and uh, this one is 2i. We can write down is 180 minus 2i. So, it is a deviation due to the plane mirror which is equal to 180 minus 2 into i where i is the angle of incidence. Now, let us understand how to calculate the deviation due to two plane mirrors. Look at here, this one is a plane mirror 1, this is plane mirror 2, angle between the two plane mirrors is theta. This one is called incident ray, this light ray is falling on mirror 1 at an angle 5. It is reflected like this way and it is falling on mirror 2 again reflected back again from mirror 2 and is going like this. This one is called reflected ray and this one is called emergent ray. Now here if you extend this instant ray like this, this one is called we already told extended instant ray. So this extended instant ray how much deflected that is called deviation nothing but from here to here. Understood students? From here to here. This one is called deviation. So, from here to here in clockwise direction it is deviated. That one how to calculate we are going to discuss now. Let us get back to our initial question. Here angle between the two plane mirrors is 70 degrees. This one is instant ray. This instant ray makes an angle mirror 1 with a 30 degrees angle. So, angle between the normal and the mirror is 90 degrees, this one is 30 means uh, this becomes 60 degrees. 60 degrees is nothing but angle of incidence. If this one is 60 degrees, what about this one also 60 degrees because we know that according to loss of reflection, angle of incidence is always equal to angle of reflection. This one is 60 degrees means what about this one also becomes 30 degrees. Now, this one is called reflected ray. This is the reflected ray for mirror 1. Again, at the same time, it was the incident ray for the mirror 2. Now, we have to know that that reflected ray which is coming from mirror M1 with what angle it strikes the mirror 2. To know the angle of incidence how much on mirror 2, first of all, we should draw the normal. So, before you going to draw the normal, first of all, according to the property of triangle, the summation of the interior angles should be equal to 180 degrees. That concept first of all you have to use it here. See this one looks like a triangle. First of all I do not know along which direction I have to draw normal. So first of all if you take this one is the triangle. In this triangle summation of the interior angle should be 180 degrees. This one is 70 degrees. This one is 30 degrees overall 100 degrees. Further, how much is remaining for 180 degrees? It should be 80 degrees. So, this should be 80 degrees. Now, you will get clarity about the normal, how to draw and way to draw. I mean, for this reflected ray, we should draw the normal right side or for this reflected ray, we should draw the normal left side. Normal makes how much angle with the mirror? 90 degrees. Okay. This one is 80 degrees. So, further, how much is needed? 
10 degrees. That's why normal should be draw right side of the reflected ray. Now, this is the normal for the second mirror. Now, what about this one is called angle of incidence because this is the reflected ray for mirror M1 at the same time this one is the incident ray for the mirror M2. Now, what is angle of incidence? Angle between the normal and the mirror is how much angle? 90 degrees. This one is 80 degrees means this one is 10 degrees and this one also will be 10 degrees. So, this is the reflected ray due to mirror M1. This one also reflected ray due to mirror M2 that is a final reflected ray which is also called as emergent ray. Now, how many deviations occurs here? Two deviations occurs. One is deviation due to mirror M1 and of course another one deviation due to mirror M2. Now, I am going to calculate the total deviation after two reflections. Now, at mirror M1, look at here, at mirror M1, let me consider deviation delta 1. So, what is the formula of deviation 180 minus 2 into angle of incidence? On mirror M1, what is angle of incidence? 60 degrees. So, you have to consider 180 minus 2 into 60 degrees. So, 180 degrees minus 120 will get 60 degrees. So, but we are getting the value how much we are getting deviation, but still we are not getting about the clarity about the direction, whether it is a clockwise or anticlockwise. To know the direction, whether it is a clockwise deviation or anticlockwise direction, we have to approach like this. How to go? So, look at here, this one is the instant ray. First of all, you have to extend the instant ray. Look at the mirror M1 only. Actually, if mirror M1 is not at here, that light ray has to go like this way. But due to the placement of this mirror, that light ray is deflected like this. Look at here, in what direction that light ray is deflected clockwise. Okay, this one is called deviation delta 1. Okay, students, I hope you understood. This is called delta 1 deviation. So, the delta 1 deviation, in what direction you are getting clockwise direction. Okay, so that is why delta 1 60 degrees clockwise. That is a deviation due to the mirror M1. Similarly, you have to calculate the deviation due to mirror 2. That one is delta 2. Once again, you have to use the formula 180 minus 2 into angle of incidence. Now, for mirror 2, here, what is angle of incidence? 10 degrees. 180 minus 2 into 10 degrees. 20, 180 minus 20, we are getting 160 degrees. Again, we got the value, but still we did not get the direction. So, how to get the direction? I already told now about the mirror M1. How to approach the for mirror M1? Same process we have to follow through mirror M2 also. Now, what is this one? This one is called incident ray for mirror M2. So, that incident ray we have to extend like this. If mirror M2 is not at here, that incident has to go like this way. But due to this placement of mirror, it is deflected like this. Okay, it is deflected like this. So, this one is called deviation delta 2. Actual light ray has to move this direction, but due to the placement of mirror, it is deviated like this way. This is called deviation. It is called deviation. In what direction it is deviated again? This also will be clockwise. Okay, so this also will be clockwise. So, we are getting two deviations due to two reflections. So, devi deviation due to the first reflection 60 degrees clockwise and deviation due to the second reflection is 160 degrees clockwise. Therefore, total deviation is delta 1 plus delta 2. Students, here you should be very careful about the addition because when there is deviation both are in clockwise you have to add it. If deviations both are in anti-clockwise also you can add it. But one is in clockwise, one is in anti-clockwise, you have to subtract it. Here, both are in clockwise direction, so you have to add it. 60 degrees clockwise, deviation 1 and 160 degrees clockwise, deviation 2. 60 degrees clockwise and 160 degrees clockwise. Therefore, total deviation will be 60 plus 160, 60 plus 160 will get 220 degrees clockwise. Okay. Like this, you have to calculate the deviation due to the two plane mirrors after two reflections. When this type of problem is asking in examination, you can use simple trick to finish this type of problems in few seconds. Let us discuss now. 
Here, to calculate the deviation after two reflections due to two plane mirrors, you can apply formula directly 360 degrees minus 2 into theta. What is theta? Theta is nothing but angle between two plane mirrors. Theta is nothing but angle between two plane mirrors. Here, same concept once we have to use this to this problem. Here, what is the angle between the two plane mirrors here? 70 degrees. Now, let us use now delta is equal to 360 minus 2 into 70 degrees. 360 degrees minus 140 degrees. We got here 220 degrees clockwise. Complete. How to get the direction clockwise by using this formula also? Simple. Here, light ray, after two reflections, they ask him to calculate the deviation. See here, it is falling on the second mirror like this way. In what direction it is rotating clockwise? That's why we have to consider direction as clockwise. Students, once look at this formula, total deviation due to two plane mirrors after two reflections, 360 minus 2 theta depends only on angle between the two plane mirrors. But it does not depend on the angle of incense with what it is striking on the plane mirrors. Students, if you are using this formula, you need to remember direction is always clockwise. Sometimes in options, if you are unable to see this option 360 minus 2 theta clockwise, you have to go to another option 2 theta anti clockwise. For example, by using this formula, if you are getting answer 240 degrees clockwise. If this one is not there in option, you have to go through another one, 120 degrees anti-clockwise also. Students, I hope you enjoyed the master class. See you in the next class. Thank you all.